These are the five things that pretty much changed my entire life. Happy New Year. I hope you all had the most wonderful Christmas. I have really, really missed you. I am so, so ready for the new year. I just wanna make January all about becoming our absolute best selves, goal setting, habit forming, and just setting ourselves up for the best 2023 that we could possibly have. So today I wanted to start by sharing the things that I get super, super clear on right at the beginning of the year. These are the five things that pretty much changed my entire life. So step one, and the very first thing that you need to do is you need to get really, really, really clear on what your priorities are. So you might start with the bigger things. So these are like your bigger priorities slash goals for the year. So one of these for me would be to buy my first home. You might know that Kenny and I have just bought our first home together that we're currently renovating, but that property is actually entirely in Kenny's name. We didn't want to go into it together because I would lose my first time buyer advantages because he's not a first time buyer and we'd be doing it together. So financially it just made way more sense for Kenny to solely own that property, which is the one that we'll actually live in. And then this year on my priority list, my goal list is to buy my very own house as well. But then there are also all of my smaller priorities or you might call these like habits that you want to form or just habits that you want to get more consistent with so an example of this for me this year is reading so I've always read but I really want to be like extra consistent with it this year so one of my goals or priorities is that I want to try and read 52 books this year so like roughly one book a week which for me I feel like is a really great goal because it's really pushing myself but it's also not like so far out of reach that I'm never going to get there. Another one for me is being more consistent with working out. If you guys were with me throughout 2022 you'll know that there are a lot of ups and downs with working out throughout the year which is totally fine but it's just such a fundamental like pillar of health so I really want this to be one of my top priorities um, slash habits slash goals for this year. Then what I will do with this list of priorities is I will physically write it down. I will usually start by writing out a list whether this is handwritten or in my notes it doesn't really matter and then I will take the gist of this and I will make a vision board I absolutely love vision boards I have found them to be borderline magical and just like so motivating and I absolutely love the process I think it's so like therapeutic making a vision board so that's something we can definitely do in another video but that is step one it is getting super clear about your priorities and then getting them physically down onto paper or in a vision board or whatever works for you. So step two is to use these priorities as your guide whenever you're decision making about something. So to give you an example, let's say I go out shopping, which I do far too much of, and let's say I see a handbag that I want to buy. Instead of looking at the handbag, taking pictures, sending pictures to my friends, saying, do you like this? Should I buy this? Or like reasoning with myself as to why I need it or don't need it. What I will do is that I will think about my priority this year, which is to buy a house. And I will think, does this serve that priority? And from there, it's usually pretty clear cut. This also works for the smaller things. So let's say one of your priorities for this year is to be more consistent with going to the gym, for example, and you are sat up the night before, you're watching your favorite TV show, and you're wondering whether to watch another episode. If you then refer to your priority of being more consistent with working out this year and you have to get up early to go to the gym, you can probably see that watching that extra episode does not serve your priorities because you're more likely to snooze your alarm in the morning and then miss your workout class or be too late to go to the gym. Um, and I just find that referring to your priorities in that way is such a good way of decision making. I feel like it's just a way of really quickly tapping into what the best version of yourself would say or would advise you to do. I do just wanna really quickly say on that one though that your priorities can and probably should change. For example, your birthday is coming up or your best friend's birthday is coming up and you're going out for a meal. Your priority there should be enjoying your birthday, enjoying your friend's birthday and being happy and living life. So. Um, I absolutely don't make these priorities like a hard rule book. It's just when you do need to be a little bit sensible with yourself, it's a really good way to just refer back to them to make a better decision. But yeah, just please remember that sometimes your priority should be happiness, fun, rest, relaxation, treating yourself, whatever it might be. They are all very valid priorities too. Okay, so step three is getting organized and just setting yourself up to succeed. So one of my absolute favorite things about the new year is that you get to pick out a new planner, a new journal, a new diary, and all of these things really, really help me to just structure my weeks. And sometimes I'll even kind of like go as far as to plan out 
my month as well, just so that I know what's what and what's coming up and what I need to do. So let me show you some of the tools that I've got for this year. So I've got some of my old trusted bits and pieces here. So I've got my five minute journal, just because this helps me with my goal of practicing daily gratitude, which is super important to me. And then this year I was sent this really, really beautiful diary by Papier, Papier, um, this brand here. So this is my week to view diary. This is what it looks like. But what I also really like about this one is you've got like your monthly goals, your to-do list and other ways to just kind of like structure your weeks, months, etc. You've got a month to view there where I'll plan out certain things for the month. So that's my kind of like general weekly planner for the year. Daily planner wise, I've got this notepad, which I've shown you before, which is intelligent change. Let me just find a page that I can show you so this is much more in detail of like planning out your actual days so it's broken down by hour from 6 a.m till 9 p.m and then you've got like your important tasks for the day etc um, and it's just much more detailed so this is something that i will reach for if i've got like a really busy work day for example and i really need like that extra structure for my day i absolutely love that for a daily planner and then this is something completely new to me that my sister bought me for christmas this year it is the daily stoic journal 366 days of writing and reflection on the art of living and basically starting on january the first asks you kind of like different questions that you reflect on morning and evening so the january first one is what things are truly in my control and then you write about it in the morning and the evening january 2nd is what am i learning and studying for third is what can i say no to so that i can say yes to what matters um, and kind of like on and on and then there's like little teachings as well throughout the book which i really like so that one is new to me this year if my sister has recommended it then i'm sure i'm going to absolutely love it being organized is so important because even if you plan out your priorities and you have every good intention of acting to serve those priorities Let's say you wake up in the morning and you have not planned out your day and you suddenly realise you've got 101 things to do, you've got appointments, you've got meetings. You're probably going to find maybe you don't have time to make your wholesome breakfast that you plan to make. Maybe you don't have time to write in your gratitude journal. Maybe you don't have time to work out or whatever your priorities are. Being really organised and planning ahead of time just means that you put yourself in the best possible position to make time to make your priorities a priority. Does that make sense? So that's step three. Step four is to get inspired. Books and podcasts are my favorite source of inspiration. All I actually asked for for Christmas this year from my sister was books, books that she's absolutely loved, books that she finds really like inspiring and motivating. So she bought me about five and then I have a few of my own. So this is currently my reading list or my non-fiction reading list for the beginning of this year. Um, I need to put these down and show you one by one because that's actually pretty heavy. So these two are along the same lines. I feel like everyone in the world has read this manifest book. And then this one is called Tapping In, which I believe is along the same lines, all about law of attraction and that kind of stuff. Then I have got this one, which my sister let me borrow actually, which is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. I feel like this is one that lots of people have read um, and one that I'm definitely really excited for. I picked up this one for a pound in a charity shop. So I thought I would give that one a read. I've got The Miracle Morning. I have got The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. If you've read Outliers, it's obviously the same guy and I've heard really good stuff about this. And then my last two is the one I'm currently reading, which is Disconnected by Emma Gannon. I'm a little bit of the way through that one, which is all about staying, well, it literally says on the front, how to stay human in an online world. And then the last one, which I've been dying to read, um, my sister bought me, which is The Panic Years by Nell Frizzle, which I take it is just all about the highs and lows of being in your 20s. So that's my non-fiction reading list. Because I'm reading a book a week for the whole of this year, I'm actually going to do book reviews once a week over on Instagram. The first one I'm going to kind of like review is this one, which will be up on Instagram next Sunday if that's something you're interested in. I also listen to podcasts, but nothing new here. I still listen to the same three pretty much podcasts, which is Diary of a CEO, the podcast by Deliciously Ella, whatever that one's called, um, and then occasionally I do now listen to Jay Shetty. That is more dependent on like who the guest is. I think everybody finds inspiration in different places. For me, it's books and podcasts, but for you guys, it might be like YouTube videos or a great many different things. Um, but whatever it is, I find that for me, this really helps to just keep me in a positive headspace. And especially when motivation takes a bit of a dip, which I feel like it does for everybody throughout the year different points and that's completely natural but reading a good book or listening to a good podcast I feel like always brings me back to a more positive 
productive space. Step five and the final step is be disciplined and stay consistent. Even when things feel like they are going wrong or they're not working, stick to your plan and be consistent because often consistency is rewarded above all else. So let me share a little personal story. When I first met Kenny about three years ago, I was in a bit of a weird space with the work that I was doing at the time and really wanting a change but never actually making that change happen. And then one day, Kenny just said to me pretty directly, you're just not disciplined. And I remember at the time that really hurt and I thought it was unfair and whatever else. Most likely it hit a nerve because I kind of knew it was true. But that turned out to honestly be like the best thing he could have possibly said to me. Because sometimes I think you do just need to be called out and it's even better if it's someone that loves you and wants the best for you that says these things. You just need someone to point it out and then you can't like be in denial to yourself about it. When I eventually did start my YouTube channel, I had that in the back of my head. You are going to be disciplined about this. You're going to be consistent. And I really stuck to that. And every single Sunday for that first year I was on YouTube. And to be honest, still now I post every single Sunday like that is non-negotiable. Um, unless that is obviously a big reason which I tell you guys about and obviously YouTube and you guys is genuinely one of the best things that's ever happened to me and I know for a fact that I would not be here unless I'd been disciplined and consistent about it so this is me being that little push for you guys just to say be disciplined be consistent it's the best thing you'll ever do because honestly often it is not about being the best or the most talented the most creative the most intelligent it's often down to being the most consistent. So they are the five things that I really focus on and make sure that I am getting into place to give myself the best possible start when it is a new year. Like I said, I'm gonna be focusing a lot on being and becoming our best selves throughout January. So there's gonna be lots of videos kind of around this theme, loads of like vlogs, just incorporating all of this stuff and just loads of bits that I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. So I hope you have the best first week of the year and I will see you next Sunday with another video. Bye guys.